name is Katie Chain. I work on education and workforce initiatives for HEB. If you're able to turn your video on, that would be fantastic so I can see you. Um, if not, I totally get it, but it would be great to talk to people instead of blank screens. Hi, Maya, how are you? Good, Good. back there, huh? Perfect, thank you. All right. So today we're going to talk, Pablo. I remember you. You were on. You were. I saw you yesterday. So it's great to see you. Oh yeah, right. I I was doing that CISO presentation. Yeah. Oh it's yeah, too. You're you one of the judges. Oh, hi again. <laughs> I'm like, do you great want me to, to help you. out this time? Like all out of the blue. It's great to see you. I'm glad you're here. Okay. Okay. Perfect. I'm like, so okay, we'll, get, we'll get. I'm like, I gotta try to use me as like an example or something. No. I mean, yeah, no huge part of my solution was marketing, so. Okay. Yeah, well, hit me we'll up. Talk about that. Hi, Diego. How are you? Awesome. Okay, I'm so good. today we're going to talk about the importance of networking. And the reason why I think this topic is so important right now is because in this digital world, it can be so difficult to, to really connect with people, right? And to really get to know people. And I know that you guys are experiencing that probably in your school life and in any internships or any jobs that you might be having that are all virtual. It can be very, very difficult to really network. So we're going to talk a little bit about that and go through um, some information. Okay, so what is networking? So networking is the action or process of interacting with others to exchange information and or develop professional or social contacts. So really, basically, it's really all about building relationships and building building relationships that are really going to help you um, as you get into your future, right? And so it's going to be just so important. Welcome, guys. Thank you guys for joining us. We're just getting started talking about networking. If any of you guys are able to turn your video on, please do. I'd love to see faces. Ariana, thank you. Sarah, thank you for turning your videos on. Love that. Of course, Pablo and Maya and Diego have theirs on already, so that's great. It's going to make it easier for me to connect with you guys afterwards, just in case you need something. So... We're going to talk about that again, networking in a digital world and how important it is and how difficult it is and how different it is from when you're really in person with people, right? And I'm going to give you some, some tips and tricks on how you can connect with other people, even though it's a digital world that we're living in today. So my name is, of course, Katie Chain, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my journey. And the reason is, I'm going to, I'm going to explain to you why I think this is important for you guys to see. So I started my career in high school. I was almost 17. I was 16 years old. I started working at Bill Miller Barbecue. How many of you guys have eaten at Bill Miller's before? Yeah. Uh, every me, but I've stopped going there when I kind of they supported Trump. Bill Miller's. There's such a thing yeah. as negative press. Yeah. Well, so that was my high school job and I really loved it. And I'll tell you why. I loved it because I met so many people. You know, I, I mean, there wasn't, you know, between working at Bill Miller's and working at HEB, there wasn't anywhere I could go in San Antonio and not see somebody that I knew. So I worked at Bill Miller's and I actually ended up staying there for 10 years. And the reason I did is because, you know, everybody's path is different. My path did not include going to college, which is unfortunate. And hopefully you guys are all planning to do something after high school, whether it's a technical school or a four-year college, or really just go straight to work. For me, it was all about going straight to work. And so I began working at Bill Miller's again. I was almost 17. I worked there through high school. I also, when I was a senior, I actually had two jobs and was going to high school. And I worked at New York and Company, which, which is Learner New York. I did that. I, I did that in the mall because I wanted to see what it was like to kind of work in the mall, right? Because it sounds fun. Really, it wasn't fun. I did not enjoy it at all, right? People come in, they try on 5,000 pieces of clothes and they maybe buy one. And then you have to put everything back up. But I tried it, I checked it out, didn't enjoy it so much. So then after I was with Bumalish for about 10 years, I decided that I was going to look for something different. So I actually applied to work at HEB. I got the job at HEB and I started working. I was actually in a leadership training program called SORM, School of Retail Management. I went through that program. Um, it took me about a year to go through the program and it was fantastic. I got to learn everything about working in the deli department at HEB because my background was food service. So that was kind of my entry level into HEB. So I was a deli manager for several years, actually nine years. And 
I had a family, the whole nine yards. And then I decided I want to continue to grow my career. So I applied for a program called the School of Retail Leadership, SORL. So School of Retail Leadership teaches you everything you need to know about running an entire unit for an HEB. And I don't know which store you guys shop in, but in, there could be anywhere from 200 partners in a store to over 500 partners in a store. And so I was able to get the experience of leading all levels of stores. And so that was fantastic. It was great. I, I did that for probably nine years again. And then I decided, I, and then someone tapped on my shoulder and someone said, hey, Katie, did you know that HEB is centralizing their corporate recruiting team? So I, I looked into it. I thought it would be a great opportunity. Get me out of the stores, get me out of working nights and weekends, right? And so I applied for a corporate recruiter position at HEB, got the job, did that for six years. From there, I was, everyone knew that my passion was working with young people and kind of helping kind of guide people, find, help, help young people find their way. So someone tapped on my shoulder and said, hey, Katie, we've got this opportunity in the corporate communications team to help build this organization called San Antonio Works. And so I was like, man, that sounds super exciting. So I went over to the corporate communications team and I helped to build that organization called San Antonio Works. And then from there, I became a communications advisor. And then now in the position I'm in today is education and workforce program manager. And the reason I tell you guys this is not really because the titles and all of those things are not important, but the important thing was everything on this slide, starting from the deli manager, I went into because somebody that I knew, somebody that I met, somebody that I networked with tapped on my shoulder and said, hey, Katie, did you know there's an opportunity available I think you'd be great for? So that's kind of helped me. The networking and the building relationships is what really helped me to get to the position that I'm in today. So why network? So again, building relationships, grow your community, gather resources, find your next job or internship. And what else? What else is important about networking, guys? You guys can put it in the chat or you can unmute and tell me out loud. What else do you think is, what else, what comes out of networking? It could, um, it could help you gain experience and apply for a higher and better job. Exactly, which definitely was something that I did at HEB. Anybody else know why else it's important to network? Creating an image for yourself. Like, I mean, like you want people like know who you are and like what you're here to do. That's a huge part of it. Yeah. And, and, and Maddie said increase social skills, which is also very important, right? Because at some point you're going to have to communicate with people. So it also helps with that. That's fantastic. Yeah. So all these reasons are why it's important to network. Right, and so this picture you're seeing on here, is anybody familiar um, with the gentleman who wrote the Cilantro Diaries, Lorenzo Gomez? He's actually speaking this afternoon to you guys. So Lorenzo is gonna tell you a little bit about himself, but he wrote three books. And one of the books he wrote was called the Cilantro Diaries. Well, this picture is a picture of my high school interns, my summer high school interns that worked for me at HEB. And we actually had Lorenzo come in and do a presentation on his book and all of the students actually read his book. So they took this opportunity to get in line and get him to sign their book, but also they got to meet him. And at that point, once they met him, he became a part of their network, right? And so that was very, that's very important. So they took advantage of this opportunity to network with someone that could potentially help them in their career in the future. So working can, um, networking can take on many different forms and it can take place in many different places, guys. So, you know, it can, it can take place in, and I, I put this internships, in career events, it can take place in job shadow days, right? In-class speakers, job interviews, random public places, Zoom or Google Classroom meetings, which we're going to talk about, and even volunteer events. So you guys, you can meet people and really you just never know who is going to be the next person that's going to help you kind of take your career to the next level. And that happened for me a lot with, with an HEB. But also I've met people even on this, in this environment. So yesterday I was a judge in one of the rooms and I met a woman that is an LPC and works out of New Braunfels and she was fantastic. So I'm planning to connect with her afterwards and kind of share some ideas and things and some projects that I'm working on to kind of bring her into the project. Because what do you know? I actually needed someone that was an LPC to help me on a project. So that's, it's just a great way guys. So Think about it. You guys are going into this, these presentations this afternoon. You know, do you know who your speakers are? Have you checked them out? Do you know if they could potentially help you land an internship this summer or they could potentially help you land a summer job 
or get you involved in a startup in San Antonio. These are all things to be thinking about as you look at your speakers that are gonna be coming on this afternoon, right? And so always just kind of knowing who's in the room and who you're gonna be in contact with really helps you kind of think about who do I wanna network with and who's gonna help me land that next opportunity that may come available to me. So how does a high school student identify a networking opportunity, right? So I'm talking about networking, I'm talking about connecting with other people, I'm talking about growing your network so they may be the next person that's gonna help you land that next job or land that next internship. So think about different ways that you can do that because in a virtual world, it's not as easy as just running into somebody in a meeting and having sparking up a conversation. It's just not that easy anymore, right? It takes a lot more effort. So think about it. You're in this, you're, you're at this thing today and yesterday, right? Now, did you guys go in and review the speaker or the attendee list when you were attending this conference? Right? Did you look and see who's going to be available and who can you connect with and who's going to help you find that? Yeah. Right? I actually, kind of, actually, kind of did. I looked at like the youth organizer team in particular. I really wanted to, I really wanted to work with them. So yeah, I actually like act, actively asked for their email, all that good stuff, so that I could get in contact and join the student coalition because that is like right up my alley and would be a perfect networking opportunity for me. That's perfect. Pablo, that's a great example of taking advantage of a networking opportunity and really planning for that. Did anybody else do that? Anybody else check out the speaker list and think about, man, who do I want to connect with in this environment? Okay, well, that's okay. But for the future, right, when you guys are going to FCCLA conferences or student conferences or even, you know, whatever that looks like, maybe you're going into a meeting, maybe you're going to go into a webinar to learn about something. Just think about that and think about, also, you know, think about the people in your classroom. So maybe, Maya, maybe you are in class with Tim. That's not Tim Bishop, but I guess that's his thing. So Tim, maybe you're in a classroom with Tim and Tim did, there's Tim, hi Tim. <laughs> so maybe you are in a class with Tim and Tim did an internship let's say at Google last summer, right? And Maya's thinking, man, I'd really love to get an internship at Google. Well, how about go and talk to Tim and say, hey, how did you get into Google? What was your experience? You know, how did you, you know, what did you learn? Was it a good experience? So looking at other high school students that are maybe experiencing something that you'd like to experience and talk to them, right? Just meet them and randomly say, hey, you wanna get some coffee or you wanna, can, can we have lunch or, can we jump on a Zoom later today where we can talk about your internship? Because I'm really interested in interning at you know, Southwest Airlines or wherever that partner interned at. So just something to think about, right? Social events, right? So you guys go out to social events, not so much anymore, but on occasion. Maybe it's you know with your family that you're going to a family event and there's an, an uncle that works at Valero. And you never really thought about it before because you were a kid and you're like, so what, he works at Valero? Like, what does that mean to me? But now... You're in high school and you're thinking about doing an internship in accounting and you know Valero has an accounting department and your uncle works at Valero. He's a network. He's someone that you should network with because he might be able to connect you with the right person that can get you that internship. So just always pay attention to who's in the room and always be ready to market yourself, right? I think there's a lot of kids, of students that don't understand, don't take advantage of family members that have amazing jobs and amazing careers and amazing companies. And they just don't take advantage of connecting with them and saying, hey, man, can you tell me about your job? You know, you work at, at Geekdom or you work at at and or you work at wherever that is that you may be interested in interning at. So always think about that when you go meet with family for family events. So what does a networking, what does networking look like for a high school student? So these are just a couple of examples of networking opportunities that students came in contact with. So the one with the three students standing up at the top and speaking. So these are these are three, this is an essay works event and these are three interns that did an internship the previous year and they're speaking to a bunch of students that now have landed internships and they're about to go into their internship opportunity, right? They're about to start their, their adventure for the summer and do their internship. And so every one of these people standing up, all three of these guys, they did an internship. Two of them did HEB internships, one in our digital with our digital team and one with our programming team. So they both had IT digital related internships with HEB. And so all of these students in this room have an opportunity to walk up to them and connect with them and ask them, who did you intern with? How was your internship? 
right? And then the gentleman in the middle, he actually interned with Bear County, I believe with Judge Nelson Wolf. So how cool would that be, right? To go up to him and talk about his internship if you're looking to get into the government related type of field or something, a political science or something like that. He could be a cool intern to connect with that can help you connect with the people that he interned with that could then land you an internship. So then on the other side, it's a classroom that has the HEB way. This was my high school interns in the summer. And they actually, I had a corporate recruiter from HEB come in. This corporate recruiter recruits for all different careers across HEB. She came in and did a, did a presentation on different career opportunities with HEB. So at that point, any of these interns, the 20 kids that are in the room, students are in the room, had an opportunity to talk to a corporate recruiter at HEB about potential internship for the next summer or career or whatever, right? And so that was an opportunity. The bottom one is actually a career event in any ISD at Blossom Stadium. And we had an HEB table set up there and students were able to come up to the table and speak to different people from HEB. One of them is actually a digital IT leader with HEB, Marty Sixkiller. And then these other two, one of the per, one of the other ones works in one of our stores and is a store leader. So they can talk to you about leadership opportunities within HEB. And then the other one is a culinary expert. So she works in our culinary group with HEB. So students that were interested in that type of career had an opportunity to walk up and really basically start a conversation and ask questions. So that was another networking opportunity that they had and that they could take advantage of. So how do you take advantage of a networking opportunity, right? So say you identify somebody and you're like, man, I really want to talk to that person. What can you do? Well, you can simply walk up and introduce yourself to them, right? If that's crazy, maybe use your, who knows what an elevator speech is? Raise your hand if you know what an elevator speech is. So basically, an, Sarah, do you know what an elevator speech is? Can you tell me? Yeah, it's like a, like a quick one minute pitch um, about like whatever it is you're talking about. So I guess in this case, like about yourself. So what would you say, Sarah? What would be three things you would say if you, Say, where, where would you like to intern or work, Sarah? Give me an example. Um, I'm with the city, with Bear County. Okay, so say Judge Nelson Wolf or maybe Sheriff uh, Salazar or I don't know, somebody that works there, you actually got into an elevator with them for whatever reason, what are three things you would want them to know about yourself? Um, that I'm willing to learn. Um, some experience that I've had. So um, as a marketing and communications intern with the CAST Network. And um, I'm not sure a third one, but. Okay. It could be maybe you're, where are you planning to go to college or, you know, something like that, right? And so, yeah, so having those things in your back pocket, if you actually run into a person on the elevator, like I've run into Charles Butt on the elevator before, right? And so what did I say to him? Or I ran into you know, Craig Boyan, which is our president and CEO on the elevator at, at my office before. And so I have to be prepared. Like, what do I want them to know about me? Like, what's important, right? What would catch their attention? Um, maybe you hand them a business card and we're going to talk a little bit about that in a minute. Maybe you're just trying to open up a conversation. So you say, man, I really like that tie you're wearing today. Where did you get that? Or maybe it's like, so why are you here today? Like maybe you're at a conference and there's, you know, and there's a, and, and it's at like you're at a hotel, but it's a big conference and you can tell they're a speaker because they've got a tag on. So you say something like, so what are you presenting today? Like, what are you presenting on today? I'd really love to catch your, your presentation or just little things that you pick up on that you can open up a conversation with, right? Maybe you just smile at someone and say, good morning, say hi. What else do you think you could do to kind of open up a conversation with a stranger that you want to connect with? Any ideas, guys? You can ask them about what they like. Yeah. Yeah, you could definitely do that. What else? Where they're going, um, how long they're going to be here, just little things. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe you can, maybe you can. At a hotel, you could see, are you here for the conference or are you here on, you know, hang with your family? Or you could just, any random thing, right? And, and a lot of times the conversation will pick up from there. So it's really not that difficult. It just seems that difficult. And you probably have that burning, like your face is burning and like you've got that knot in your stomach, like, man, I really want to say something, but I'm freaked out right now. And then you just do it. And then it just is fine, right? Because I've been there. 
I was really nervous coming on to do this speech with you guys. But once I started talking, you guys are talking back to me and we're interacting. It makes it a lot easier for me as a presenter to, to, to do this. So everybody gets nervous at some point, but it's, it's what do you do about that? Like, how do you get past that, right? So let's talk about networking in a virtual environment. So these are these look just like what we're doing today, right? So yeah, just like setting up like a Zoom presentation and like saying, okay, here's what I'm doing. What would be like a student doing too, sir? Like one of these workshops like you're doing right now. Yeah, so so think about this. How do you connect in a, in a Google Classroom environment or in a Zoom environment? So here we are. We're in this environment, right? We're here. So a couple things, you know, how can you introduce yourself and market yourself in this world? So can anybody kind of so, so of course, identify, focus on who's in the room, right? So, you know, I'm in the room. I'm Katie Chain. I actually run our high school internship program for HEB. That's part of my job. Um, I work with a lot of schools across Texas. So, you know who I am, sort of, right? Or if you knew I was going to present and you could have looked at my Zoom and my LinkedIn, which I don't do a very good job of, or you could have Googled me or something and found out something about me in case I was someone you wanted to connect with. Same as you've got Lorenzo Gomez, uh, uh, presenting later. Maybe you want to Google him or looked up his LinkedIn and see what he's all about in case he's someone you want to network with, you know? So you've got, and then you've got your classroom. You've got a ton of people on here that are colleagues of yours. Maybe they go to a different school. Maybe they go to your school, but based on what they, what their experiences are, you may want to connect with them. You may have heard them yesterday present. Maybe they presented in a room that you were watching and you're like, man, I love their project. I'd like to connect with that student. So there's a couple ways you can do that, right? You can identify who you are, like these are this top, this top one over here, um, the top Zoom was a Zoom that they actually had all the HEB interns, the college interns that were interning with HEB, there was 200 of them, about 80 of them were digital IT interns, right? So my high school interns were able to participate in that Zoom meeting. So based on listening to the participation and these kids, these other college students, there may be a college student that say they're going to Texas Tech that they are focusing on computer science. And then I've got one of my high school students that are in the bottom corner that are on that meeting. And they think, man, I wanna study computer science too. I wonder what the program is like at Texas Tech. So a couple of things they could do. They could private chat someone. So if you guys look at your, at your boxes that you're in right now, and you put, your, you put your mouse over the three dots and you click on it on a certain person, right? Like I'm gonna click on Diego and I'm gonna say chat, and now I can personally chat Diego, right? So now I can start a conversation with Diego and just say, hey man, I heard that you were going to tech to study computer science, can you tell me about the program, right? So did you guys all practice that? Like everybody private chat somebody right now, something nice, just like hi or something. Let me know when you've done it, if you tried it. Even if it's a stranger, so see, so that's a way that you can private chat. So if you're in, perfect, thank you, hello. So that's a way that if you're in a Zoom room and you wanna connect with someone and <clears throat> you know, you, you're obviously here so you can't talk to them, you can private chat them. And you don't want, now you gotta be very careful guys because if you use the private chat, you don't wanna say anything dumb in a private chat because why they say it's private is anything ever really private. So you just make sure you use it for professional reasons to connect with others, or maybe like someone had an idea and you're like, man, that's a great idea. You can private chat them. The other thing you can do is write down their information, right? And then go to LinkedIn and Google them or go look them up on LinkedIn after the chat and connect with them that way. And then you can start conversating with them. So there's lots of ways to connect with people on Zoom that you just, you gotta take advantage of because again, you're not gonna be in person, right? There's no, you, I'm not gonna be in the room with Diego or with Sarah or with Maddie. So if I wanna connect with them, you know, it's, it's, I can do it this way. So just something to think about. Okay, so networking, here we go. If the, if, so we talked about that, if the chat's available. And then, and then when you chat them, ask them for something. Like, hi, like, um, I'm really interested in where you wanna go to school. Or, or like, if it was me, if I say, hey, Diego, I might, he might've present, like when I'm on this, like I'm also, you guys are also presenting to me sort of, and like the, the ones that have their, their videos on and the ones that are participating in the conversation. I might be like, man, I really think Diego would be a good fit for HEB. I'm going to connect with them and see if he's interested in an internship. So I can connect with them and say, Diego, 
would you would you be okay if we connected after this so we can talk about a possible internship at HEB this summer, right? <clears throat> so those are just different things. So an ask, maybe you say, hey, Pablo, can we connect after this meeting? Because I'd really like to discuss your presentation further, right? So you're giving them a reason why you can connect. You're not just saying, let's connect. You're saying, this is why I want to connect. I'd really love more about your job, right? I really want to learn more about what you do for a living or or how you started your career or how, why you chose to go to that college for that specific program. So always give a reason. Always make sure you're taking good notes because what if you want to say, let's say ja Yasmin wants to connect with me afterwards and she says, Katie, can we connect afterwards? I really like to talk with you about blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, okay. So then later on we get on a Zoom meeting and we're connecting and I say, so, so, Ariana, what did you think about my comment about the presidential election? But maybe she wasn't really listening to me and maybe she didn't take any notes on anything I said. So now she's like stumped, like she doesn't know what to say. So you gotta make sure you take good notes, you pay attention to the presenter, especially if you wanna connect with them afterwards because you never know how the conversation's gonna go. All right, so we're gonna go on. So who's in your network today? So tell me who, who put in the chat box, who do you consider to be someone in your network today that could possibly help you with your career, your internship or whatever? Maybe it's even an assignment you have to do at school. So put it in the chat guys. So mine are this, this, this one right here, that's my brother, he's a realtor and that's his business card. And so he's a great connection for me. It's silly, but it catches your eye, right? This gentleman over here in the corner is David Marquez. He's actually a um, senior director with Bear County. Down here, I've got Shauna Goodman. She works with the city of San Antonio Tour, uh, Tourism and Hospitality. Uh, Jean Russell, she's, a, she's in my network. She obviously is the executive director of the CAST Network. Lorenzo Gomez, which you're gonna hear present this afternoon. Him and I have had several conversations and we've done some projects together. Winnell Heron is a senior VP at HEB. When I need something through HEB, I can go to her. And then these are two personal friends that are real estate agents that also, one of them also runs a nonprofit organization. So those are the people that are in my network. <laughs> and as you think through yours, you know, personal, personal friends, your mom, your dad, your relatives, your boss, your principal, your teacher, friends, parents, relatives, coworkers, neighbors, fellow students. Like these are all people that are literally in your personal network that you can connect with. Right, and you can ask questions too, and things like that. So, always think about that. All right, your mom and dad, Mr. Bishop. Mr. Bishop is amazing. Jean Russell, Yvette, Kathy. These are all great connections, guys. So, use those right to your advantage. We're getting close. So, this I want to show you guys this because this is a student at Cast Tech, and this is actually several years ago, and he doesn't know that I use this. But I use it every time because when we talked about business cards earlier, you guys were probably like, how can I have a business card? I don't have a job. But this is, he was a, he was a freshman and he was on the user experience pathway. He was certified in Adobe Illustrator. He went to Cast Tech. He's got a portfolio and an email. So he handed me this business card when I met him for the very first time when he was a freshman, he's now a senior. And I was like, wow. So now and I did, I used this business card to connect with him for an internship at HEB when one came up with the user experience area, the UX designer area. So business cards, guys, they're cheap, they're easy to create, and it's something that you can keep in your pocket. So if you do run into somebody in an elevator that you wanna connect with, you can hand them a business card and they will be super impressed. So just think about that. And again, he, 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 he went to Cast Tech. Okay, so I finished right on. We got a little bit, a couple of minutes. If you guys have any questions, this is my contact information in case you do want to connect with me. You want to share your resume, talk about an internship, whatever. This is my information. You guys have any questions for me? Um, how old do you have to be to get an internship at HEB? You have to be 16. Any other questions, guys? Can I take down your email for um, internship opportunities? You sure can. Did you uh, it? Can you show your information again real quick? Yes, I sure can. So what internship uh, opportunities can we get from getting an internship with HEB? So at HEB, we will have some digital IT internships and there'll be some others, but I'm just not quite sure what that looks like yet. If you will keep an eye on heb.com slash careers and go to internships, 
probably mid February, late February, you'll be able to see the internships that we'll have available hmm. posted Everybody there. What colleges? What was that? What colleges do you recruit the most from? What college? What colleges do you recruit the most from? So I will tell you, it depends on the program. So like, if you're looking at cybersecurity, we recruit a lot from UTSA. They've got an amazing cybersecurity program. If we're looking at meat science, it may be the A&M Ag program up in College Station. It just depends on, on the programs that are out there and what we're looking for. We, we also do, we do a lot of recruiting from here. Texas A&M San Antonio is a new one. Trinity University, St. Mary's. We have a gentleman right now that went to St. Mary's for computer science. He did a high school internship when he was in high school and he actually did two high school internships. He came back and did two college internships. And last December, a year ago, he was graduating um, from St. Mary's and we offered him a full-time position as a programmer at HEB, making probably 60 to $70,000 a year right out of college because he had done all of those internships with us. Okay, let's see, one more question, let's see, is there, you know, the struggles, I did go through some struggles. I will tell you a couple of struggles I went, went through as I was going and as I was building my career is self-confidence. Like I didn't think the job I'm doing today, I thought I could do this job, you know, 10 years ago. So I would say myself, I was a huge barrier for myself. When you talk about opportunities and career choices, like I didn't go to college. And so that was always a stigma for me thinking, man, I can't get there. I, ha I, I don't even have a degree, but it turned out that it's not always the degree that gets you the job, guys. It's about networking, building relationships, learning, um, being a good listener, um, connecting with the right people. There's lots of different things that go into building a career. However, you do at this point in time, you do need something after high school, whether it's a certification, a bachelor's, an associate's, a four-year. It just depends on the job you want. You've got to see what does it require and then go from there. Okay, I think I'm going to get cut off because I see the look. So I'm going to have to go. You guys have my contact information. If you have any other questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to me. And I hope you guys enjoy the rest of your day. Bye. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome.